Hiya guys, welcome back to the shed and welcome to another episode with Project Shinobi. What we're going to be doing in, in, uh, in this episode is we're going to quickly look at the wheels um, because what we've got to do is we've got to strip sprockets off, discs off, get the bearings out. Uh, one thing I'm not going to be able to do myself is get the tyres off because I don't have a tyre machine. That is an aspiration um, for uh, later on when the wife allows me to uh, spend that kind of cash. Um, but in the meantime, obviously what I'll do is I will get the tyres pulled off um, prior to getting the wheels blasted, ready for powder coat. Now, um, quickly what I want to talk about is um, colours. So I, uh, I put a little poll up on uh, in the YouTube community section um, and there was uh, quite a decent response from it really. Um, I put the options that I wanted, that I was, you know, th pondering. Um, obviously the three stock factory colors the red the blue which this bike was originally blue um and obviously the uh, the lime green uh, and i also put another option up about um going for a custom uh, finish and that was quite a decent response actually i think there was a total of 54 54 votes and the outright winner was actually to take it green um and that's where I wanted to be. If I'm honest, had 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 it overwhelmingly been in a different direction, I may well have considered that. But I was always erring on the lime green uh, colour scheme for this bike because it's a Kawasaki, and much like the GSXR here, which is blue and white, blue and white is the GSXR colour, and for Kawasaki's, it's lime green, isn't it? It's, you know, they call it team green for a reason. Anyway, guys, uh, enough waffling on. Let's uh, get into the nitty gritty of what we're going to be doing in this episode. Okay, in this episode, what we're going to be doing is taking the disc off, taking the sprocket off, sprocket carrier off, and we're going to get all the bearings out uh, of the inside on both wheels. Now, the discs themselves, let's have a look at this one. Um, there's no lipping on them. Uh, 4.5 millimeters minimum thickness. Now, I haven't got my micrometer to hand, um, but, you know, with my calibrated eye, I'm fairly confident that they're actually... Um, more than five and uh, four and a half mil and same on this one um i'll see how they clean up um there is ever such a slight groove on that one i'll see how they clean up if um if i decide that they look a load of rubbish then i'll then i'll scrap them and i'll just get new ones uh probably ebc or something like that and obviously um yeah they, they i mean they'll they'll clean up from as far as dirt's concerned it's just whether they're uh they're worth putting back on the bike um because uh, whilst it's nice to have nice shiny things on there, um, these are the OE rotors for from Kawasaki, and it's nice to have uh, a little bit of originality where we can, well, you know, where we can. And um, if, if there's nothing wrong with them, why throw them in the bin? You know, it, it's it's it, it is that simple. Anyway, what we're going to do? Uh, I'm going to grab a couple of bits of wood, um, and I'm going to lay the wheel down and. The sprocket, I knew that was going to happen. The sprocket carrier fell off. Um, lay the wheel down, and what we're going to do, we're going to buzz off the uh, buzz off the, um, the disc first. I'm going to use an impact gun for this. Uh, six mil. These will be um, Loctited in place, as you can see there's red Loctite on there, um, so a impact gun does. Does make fairly light work of them, that one was a little bit more of a challenge. And there we are, right, disc off. Now, as I said before, it's um, 
not in terrible condition. There is a bit of surface corrosion, but that's to be expected. I will measure the thickness, and if it is below the uh, below the minimum, then it will be getting scrapped. Now, um, what I need to do, turn her over. We've got the cushion drives here, the little rubber cushion drives. Again, they look all right. Um, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna refit them back in. The, uh, the purpose of these cushion drives is to take up the um, initial uh, slack, so to speak, in the drivetrain when you when you put it into gear. Um, without them, it would be quite hard. It would be incredibly harsh. And what that does is it just gives. A, that's why they're called cushion drives. Just gives it a little bit of a little bit of a cushion before it, um, you know, while it engages and um, makes it a lot smoother as you pull away. So let's uh, whip them off. Uh, I think they're 14 mil. Yeah, right. See if I can get them off. Yeah, they're actually not that tight at all. That one is. Oh, that one's very tight. I'm going to have to get a breaker bar on that one. That one's all right. tight as well and that one and that one so two of them came off really really easily and the other four did it right well they will grab the breaker bar buzz all them off and then we can get the sprocket off here we go There's a sprocket off. Now, that I will be replacing because um, I'll just buy a, a, a kit. And these are probably clean up. Right, now we can take the sprocket carrier off. There's a spacer just there that we need to retain. And in here we can see there's a bearing in the sprocket carrier, so that will need pressing out. And what I'll do, we'll, um, we'll get the, uh, the press out. Remove the uh, oil seal, obviously, and then we'll get the press out and then we'll, we'll push that sucker out. Okay, now we'll remove the cush drives. And I don't know if you heard that, actually, there's a, another spacer in there which um, just dropped out of the inside of the, inside of the bearing, so I'll put that to one side as well. Right, here's the, uh, here are the bearings and what we need to do is um, get them out. Now there's a couple of methods you can use to get these out. You can put a pry bar or a drift in and there's a spacer tube inside. And what you're trying to do, if I, uh, if I get a pen actually, what we're trying to do is here's the bearings, top and bottom and like so. What we're trying to do is trying to basically make the spacer tube go like that so that we can put a drift or something down here and we can knock it onto the opposite side bearing from up here with a hammer. Um, and then obviously what you can do is you can then switch the spacer tube the other way and then here at this point, and then what you'll do is it will come down uh, each side a little bit at a time. And that's what we're um, ultimately trying to achieve. So what I'll do, um, I've actually got some little pry bars which are probably perfect for this. Um, I do also have a set of bearing pullers which um, you can use. So what I'll do, I will actually demonstrate both methods. I'll do one using the, the bearing pullers and I'll do another one um, utilising the similar sort of method by which I, uh, I described just a second ago. So let me go and grab some tools and we'll, uh, we'll dig into them. Okay, there's a little spacer on the... Uh, just covering up the oil seal and this oil seal needs prising out so no effort whatsoever okay so down in here you probably can't see very well but there is a spacer tube now that the, those two bearings are um uh kind of pinching that spacer tube but with um something like this what you can do is you can prise it across and as you can see now if you look down there you can see that the spacer tube is across and what that's done is the inside of the bearing on this side is given as a little ledge on the bearing that we can put something through and give it a good whack out uh, and that's what this screwdriver is for as you can see it's right blunt on the end and that's literally all i ever use this um, screwdriver for so don't go using your your, your nice uh, your nice screwdrivers for this job that's what i've got this one for
So one thing you will notice on this side, there is a circlip on this uh, this bearing. So before we go and pull that one out, I do need to remove the uh, the circlip, but we're not bothering with that one just yet. We are starting on this side. Hopefully if you, if you look down, hopefully it'll show up on the camera. If you look down the hole, all the way to the end, you can see the edge of the bearing where I'm going to be driving onto. Um, and what I'm gonna do is just put my screwdriver down there and give it, get it onto the ledge of the, get it onto the ledge of the bearing, just like so. That's on the edge of the bearing now, and then give it a sharp whack with the hammer, uh, and hopefully it'll start to drive the bearing. Now, as as the bearing starts to come out, you'll um, the the that spacer tube will free up a bit more and probably give you a little bit more lateral movement. Obviously, on my drawing, I was over egging it because it doesn't move anywhere near that much. But what I'm going to do now is get it on just like so, and give it a whack. Give it a couple of whacks, actually. And hopefully, we'll, we'll start to move, we'll start to move that bearing. Um, if necessary, I may need to grind the end of my, my screwdriver just to give it a bit more of a point. Um, Come down eventually, and yeah, well, uh, it will it will slowly start to pull down. So what I'll do, I'll keep giving it a whack, and then I'll bring it back just as we're about to get it out. Okay, hopefully you can hear that, and that is the slop in the uh, in the spacer tube because the bearing. If we turn it over, as you can see, it's started to come out. Um, we've got a, we've got it out some, it's about a, half, about a third of the way out, I guess. But there's loads of slop in the um, in the spacer tube now, so I can get right on that bearing. And I reckon now, with a good hard whack, it'll probably drop out. Same on the other side. And there we go. Effortless. And there is the spacer tube. Obviously, it's absolutely bogging. Um, the uh, in, the inside of this hub is actually hollow, as you can see inside. There's there's nothing really to it. So the spacer um, just basically sits there. It, it, that spacer stops the bearing going all the way in, um, because obviously if you were to hit the heck out of this, it would fall inside the uh, inside the uh, inside of the hub. And obviously in in use, you need that spacer there to keep the two bearings evenly spaced apart. Anyway, that's one side done. What we need to do now is the other side. But first, I've got to remove the pesky spur clip that's um, preventing that bearing coming out. Now, this one will come out dead easy because I don't have to mess around with the spacer tube and all that sort of stuff. Uh, it's literally a case of getting that circle clip out and then I can just whack it out with me screwdriver. But as I said before, what we're going to use is we're going to use a set of bearing pullers. Um, but I've just got to go and grab them out and get them off the shelf. Right, okay. So, circuit pliers and a little screwdriver. What we're going to do here is we're going to remove the circlip. If I can get the pliers in, there we go. This is going to be a pig, I've absolutely no doubt about it. Got it. They're a swine, but obviously necessary. Uh, circular suppliers are necessary to get them out. Okay, so what we're going to do? Obviously, I could just whack it out with me uh, with me screwdriver, but I do have a set of bearing collars, and what they do is these little um, thing. You can see they've got like a little like a little uh, lip on the end, and if I screw that in, you can see and it opens up. And obviously the further I screw that down, the further up it, um, it opens. And then what I'll do, I'll stick it inside there. And then that will catch on the inside of the bearing. So what I'll do, I'll get that installed first. And it's simply a case of winding it down with a couple of spanners. I haven't gone too far there. There we are. So we are in the right place now. Don't 
do it the right way. That will help. Right, there we go. I think we're almost in the right place. There we are. I think we're going to be in in a good place there. So what I need to do now is there's, there's a couple of options. I've got a slide hammer, or you've got a you've got a bridge which you can put across, and then all you do is you wind that down. Uh, sorry, wind that out even, and it will pull the bearing out. Um, so there's a couple of options. I like the slide hammer. Uh, I, th I think the slide hammer um, is a, a bit more effective, and so that's what I'm going to use. And then all it is is a case of bashing it until the bearing comes out. So here we go. trying to hold the wheel down at the same time and it's moved ever so slightly but not enough so I think what I'll do I will give the bridge a bit of a, a bit of a bash and see how we get on because um, the slide hammer didn't seem to do what I wanted it to do um, it has moved ever so slightly, I wouldn't be able to refit the circlip, um, but not enough. So let's get this on. Right, and then what we've got to do is adjust it until the feet of the bridge are on the wheel. Right then, here we are all set up. Got a 24 mil spanner for there and a ratchet for the top. Now what we're gonna do is we are going to undo this, uh, basically go anti-clockwise, which will be pulling the, this bar, this um, threaded rod up through that nut, which should in, in turn pull that bearing out. So that's what we're gonna do now. I think you just heard that. That is the bearing releasing from the corrosion and all the stuff that's stuck inside the hub and here it comes as you can see it's going out nicely and it's fairly effortless and there we are that is that um, what I need to do now is obviously undo this from the tool release the bearing from this and there we are that is all the bearings removed from um, from the uh, from the rear wheel and yeah we could clean that up um, obviously when this goes to powder coat we don't want a powder coat inside there and likewise on this side we don't want a powder coat inside there um, around the outside of there I will probably suggest that we don't powder coat that as well because the inside you know the inside of the sprocket carrier does sit on that hub and it's quite a snug fit so the only one, the only uh, bearing on the rear wheel we've got to do it with now is the uh, the bearing inside the sprocket carrier. Now, if we pull, where's my little pry bar on? I had a pry bar a second ago. There, uh, don't know, disappeared. There we go. Pull the all seal out. We can see the bearing just inside here. Um, there is a another circlip just here, so we get the circlip out, and again. Same as we did before. And obviously.
obviously you get to a point and then the circlet likes to slip so it's get worth getting a screwdriver underneath just to pry it up to help you come on stop being a swine right we've all seen a circlet being taken <laughs> we've all seen people struggling to take circlets out before so let's get it out and then uh, move on to the next stage there we go got it we'll move on to the next stage which is going to involve the press up here um, because we're going to use the press to get this one out because it'll just make life a lot easier all right then we've got the uh we've got the sprocket carrier um in position on the bed what i'm going to do is i'm going to rest it on the on the studs for the sprocket but uh what i want to do is i'm going to protect the ends of the ends of the studs with a nut just to uh make sure they don't get mangled and um, i don't mind if them if the nuts get mangled i just don't want the studs mangled because then i'll have to replace them unnecessarily okay there we are level them all off and there we go right what i've got here a couple of sockets what we're going to do stick that socket on there and i'm going to put that one inside so it gives it something else to press against um just like so yeah that should be good right now bring the press down and there we are right now we're starting to compress it what'll happen is we should get a, a bit of a crack as it frees off the bearing or not <laughs> probably one of the only times that's ever happened normally you get a bit of a crack as it as it just lets go um, but in this instance it didn't um, it's coming out really really easily as it happens and there we go there's the bearing it is a bit noisy that one so there's actually quite a little bit of there's quite a bit of um, lateral movement in it um, you can feel anyway yeah there we go that is um all the bearings in the rear of the bike removed uh, so now all we need to do is the, uh, the front so the fronts are done in exactly the same way um, as the uh, the rear wheel ones so obviously there's a spacer between and we get both the uh, both the bearings out in exactly the same manner um, so I'll, I'll crack on with those and then uh, I'll bring you back at the end okay there we are that is all the bearings and seals removed from the wheels um and yeah it was pretty straightforward it wasn't too uh, too taxing now one thing i do want to discuss very briefly before we move on is the brake discs on the front um they're not actually the same one of these is non-oe and i believe that's an oe one and that one isn't um and if we look at them that one is in a lot worse state than that one um i don't know where this one's from uh but uh, it's definitely not the same. Uh, even the, uh, the the hub of the brake disc is di a different colour and not the same not the same pattern. Um, I think this is the uh, the stock OE one and this is a uh, uh, aftermarket one. Um, quite why that's happened, I don't know. But this one seems to be less worn than this one. It's um, yeah, it's a weird one. So I think I am going to have to buy the bullet by a, a set of discs because yeah, why not? Um, anyway, um, that is all we're going to do with the wheels now. What I'll do, I'll get the tyres the tires pull, uh, pulled off. These will get uh, shot blasted and then um, powder coated. Now the green, um, the green C model, um, I'm pretty sure had uh, like a, a dark grey, like a graphite colour wheel as opposed to a lime green one. Um, uh, obviously what I want to do is I want to try and get it factory right, uh, you know, correct. Um, so I'll, uh, I'll look into the colours. If anybody's got any uh, suggestions on that, then obviously let me know in the uh, in the comments, and I'll um, I'll, uh, I'll look into the getting the correct colour sorted out. But yeah, that is uh, that's it for this video, guys. Um, hopefully uh, it was interesting, um, and I will see you all for the next episode. Take care, guys. Bye bye now.